Hello, I'm Father Kevin Hanlon, the superior of uh, the Mary Knoll Fathers and Brothers working in the United States. A blessed and happy new year to all of you. Thank God 2020 is over and let's hope with all the good news we've been receiving about vaccines and such that this year will be a much better one than last year. And as always, we're beginning our year with the feast on the New Year's Day, the 1st of January, the Solemnity of Mary, the Mother of God. And that's the perfect way to start a new year. The new year on the secular calendar is born and Our Lady is uh, the Queen and Mother of Heaven and Earth. We celebrate the fact that she is the Mother of God, but in relationship to the Holy Trinity, she also has two other titles. Of course, she's the Mother of God because uh, Jesus is the God-man. She can't be Mother of just one aspect of him. She became the Mother of the whole being the person that was within her. So we say that she is the mother of Christ and the mother of God. Yet she is also called the daughter of the father. You might say that's her first title. Um, every father wants a daughter. And of course, God has many children. But we'd have to say that Mary Though the father loves all the daughters equally, yet she is the special one, the one chosen to be the mother of the son. So when we think of Mary and we are close to her, let's also remember that we, with her, through her you might say, we also have this special sonship and daughtership with the father of how close he is to us. Her other title in relationship to the Holy Trinity is the spouse of the Holy Spirit. Um, and that uh, is obvious, of course, from what is announced and then happens in Luke, the Gospel of Luke chapter one. The angel appears to her and tells her what will happen or what can happen, what can be. You might even say that's a, a proposal. He prophesies something to Mary. But of course, she has to say, like any spouse, she has to say, I do. And uh, she doesn't use those exact words. She uses a much more beautiful phrase, let it be done according to your word. This word that you have brought from the Father, let it be done. And she is then overshadowed by the Holy Spirit in a mystical yet beautiful and practical way. The Holy Spirit overshadows her and she becomes the mother of the Son. So it's a wonderful thing we celebrate this month, Mary, the mother of God. When we think of her as the mother of the son, we also think of all mothers. We think of our own mothers and uh, of how well they know us. Why is that? Well, they, who spends more time with the child from his infancy to adulthood than the mother? And in my experience, mothers know a lot, but they keep a lot of it inside. They keep silent. They've seen the child make a million mistakes and have a number of successes, and they're quiet. They don't tell him, they don't nag him, because they want the, the son or the daughter to stand on their own two feet, to become men and women. So they quietly pray and uh, keep silence. And Our Lady had this gift in a much greater way. Uh, how does one raise the Son of God? 
how does one raise the Son of God? There's no manual for it. Uh, there's hints of it maybe in the Old Testament, but she had to, in silence, listen quietly to the voice of the Holy Spirit, to the voice of the Heavenly Father, and to raise this precious, precious Son. She's also a disciple. We see in the Gospel of John very clearly, it talks of her traveling with the disciples to be with our Lord, to listen to him, to go back together with him, uh, and to enjoy each other's company. So it's, St. John gives us this understanding of her as a, you might say, a student, a disciple of the Son. And it's also thanks to St. John that we understand her in her very important relationship to us. From the cross, Jesus says, woman, behold your son. Woman, behold your son. He could have said, mother, behold your son. But then we wouldn't know if he was speaking to her just as his mother, as Jesus' mother, or if he meant something more. So he used the word woman, just as Eve was the woman, the mother of the old creation, he uses woman as a title. This is what you are, woman. This is what you will become, the mother of the new creation. So John becomes her son, but with him, all the disciples, and then all who uh, wish to follow the son have her as a mother. You might even say that all people, even if they don't know Christ, are waiting to enter into that wonderful relationship with the mother of God. I remember many times in Japan, where the country is 95% or more non-Christian, yet uh, it's rare the Japanese who will pass by the church see the statue of the mother and the son and not feel something, not sense something. In fact, many times they'll stop and say a short prayer. So let us together with the son give thanks for our heavenly mother and ask that she protect us all in this new year. And let's offer now our prayers that some of you have sent in Please also, from where you are right now, join in with your own prayers uh, for this new year. For a blessed and happy new year, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace in the world, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we find a cure and a vaccine to end COVID-19, and for your family's health, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For a financial blessing, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Don's health and two young men with lymphoma, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That your loved ones return to the sacraments, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all frontline workers and their families, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an end to violence and looting, for peace in our homes and the world, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all the members of the Mary Noel Prayer Guild, living and deceased, and for all of their intentions, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us join now in prayer with the words that our Savior gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. And let us now join together and pray this month's prayer to Mary, the Mother of God. From your hands, O God, of every time and place, we humbly joyfully accept this precious gift of a new year and a new day, Lord. Into your most merciful hands, we commend all the joys and sorrows, hopes and dreams, frustrations and failures of the past year, asking only that you might use our poor offering to advance your kingdom here on earth. May Mary, Mother of the Word incarnate, ever intercede for us who struggle here below. May she receive all who have died and present them to her Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. And may she who treasured all things in her heart help us to understand and fulfill God's will today and all the days of our life. Amen. At the beginning of this new year, instead of picking one particular Marino missionary, I'd like to uh, remember all of you who pray for us and support us and are one with us in heart. We speak of Jesus as being the Son of Mary and the Son of God. When we speak of missionaries, we are to be Christ for other people throughout the world, but you might say that we're the sons of this church, this American church, this United States uh, culture, of all the good things we've received with you and from you in our lives, from when we are children to growing up in the church and the gospel that we announce. It's not simply just a book, it is also this wonderful Catholic desire that Christ be known and loved throughout the world. We have this precious gift of him, of our faith, and of our church. And because of this church, because of all of you who pray and believe and receive him every Sunday in the Most Holy Eucharist, because of all of this, the Lord was able to give us individually a desire to serve him and to announce his name to the ends of the earth. So once again, I thank you for your prayers and support without which we would not be possible. And I ask God to bless you very deeply in 2021. Our next prayer guild will be on Friday, February 12th. 2021 at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. Thank you and God bless. <laughs>